Hi, I'm Holly Pike. If you'd like a trial of the Generations software that I use for digitizing, please visit TryGenerations.com. This video is a recording of a live video I did for my previous students. You may hear references to You Can Digitize or YCD. That's my old website that is now closed. My new website is digitizingschool.com. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. I think today we're going to do this. This is a tool alphabet. It's all different tools made into alphabet. I think it's kind of cute. So we're going to do images template and say, OK, our resize box will come up. You can resize after bringing it in. It's just easier to get it approximately the size you want because it, sometimes this artwork comes in at 300 millimeters by 500 millimeters, which is very, very, very huge. And you won't be able to find the corners to resize. So it's best to do it here. If you like the size, that's great. I'm going to do this in the 4x4 hoop, so this number is perfectly fine. And I'll say OK. And here's my design. Now you can make this a little bit darker. As long as it is selected with a left click, you can hold your Shift key and press the plus key. And you can see it makes it darker so that you can kind of see what you're doing. OK, so the plan to do this design. This is not a terribly difficult design but you still need to have a plan because otherwise things will end up in the wrong place. So when I do my plan, well, isn't that fun? My pen appears to be gone. Well, anyway, you're going to try and figure out what you're going to do first and it would be the tape measure first and then maybe this and then the end, the end of the screwdriver <clears throat> and then the handle and all the shading. You might do the shading. You might want to do shading here. You might not want to do shading. That's entirely up to you when you do the design. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump in and start doing this by grabbing my yellow. I like to work in color. I know some people don't. Some people just work in that nasty blue, but that's a personal preference. I'll go up to 400. And you see, can you see here where this doesn't match? Now, if you're, you're doing a piece of artwork for a lesson or for a customer or something like that, you want to make sure that this matches up. You see how this one's higher than this one? So you have to make a decision. Either this one goes lower or this one goes higher. Doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm going to start right here, maybe. And overlap and yes I could put the whole thing in and then uh, use create a void but for the lesson we're just going to do this wow life is not happy on my computer today here Every time I start the webinar software, things stop working on my computer. I don't understand it, but it is what it is. Now I'm just putting in a complex fill. We might be able to do this um, with a satin. Okay, and then we'll go out and take a look. So here's our tape measure. Now, you see the stitch angle here on this piece? Look at the stitch angle on this piece. It's opposite, or almost opposite. We want them to be the same for the continuity of the design. So I'm going to select this and hit my spacebar, and I'm going to look at what my stitch angle is. It's 22. I want to make sure I have it exactly right. This is 46, so I'm going to make this a 22. And now it matches. If we bring this up closer, you can see that these stitch angles now match. So it makes it look normal. It makes it look correct. Okay, so our choice here is to either do darker shading here or lighter shading in the center. 
I think I'm going to do the lighter shading in the center. Um, so it looks like the tape measure is, <coughs> excuse me, catching some light. So I'm going to darken up this tape measure a little bit because I don't want it quite that bright. So now I can put a bright one over it. I'll go up to 400. And let's take a lighter yellow, maybe this one. And we can put this in with a satin or we can put it in with complex fill. I'm going to put it in with complex fill and see what we get. And then I'll lighten up the density on it and make the stitch direction. Actually, I'll make the stitch direction the same so that it blends and it doesn't stand out screaming. Now, ordinarily, if you want your shading to stand out really well, you make the shading the opposite stitch direction than the object you're putting the shading on. Hopefully that made some sense. Okay, so there's my shading. And I already have underlay in this bottom layer. So let's hit our space bar and go into the complex fill tab. Oops, there you go. And I'm going to change my density from 0.5 to maybe 1.5. And then over here, under the basic tab, I'm going to remove the underlay. I don't mind if it shows through. It's okay. So now you can see that there's the shading. <coughs> but I want to make sure that it's the same um, direction because I want it to blend in. If I want it to stand out, oh, why didn't that look right? I'm going to make it a darker color just so I can see it. Okay, now that's not, that's not making me all that happy. That's not all that nice. So let's change our idea and let's go to a satin and put the highlighting in. So we'll do it again. We'll use our satin. Because the satin will wrap around nicely. And we can kind of control what's going to happen, I think, a little better. You could also put it in manually. But on something like this, it's really kind of measured. Manually isn't going to, I don't think it's going to look quite right. Okay, so here's our um, highlighter again. I'm going to hit our space bar. Hit our space bar. Now we're going to go into the satin tab. And again, we have our density down here. So I'm going to make it like a, a 1.0. And I'll go over here and turn off my underlay and say OK. Now let's take a closer look and see if that's what we like. I think it needs to be even lighter in density. So instead of going into the space bar, I can just come over here to my quick bar, type in 1.5. Try 2.0. That's better. I like that better. What I'm not liking is it looks kind of strange in there. All right, so there's our highlighting. If you like that, that's great. If you want to instead put um, a feathered edge on this, you could because it is a satin. Come down here and use a feathered edge, and you could feather both sides by maybe something random. Pick 22. See what happens. So now it's more random if you like that better. It's not really random, it's measured, but you get my point.
Okay? Questions? Okay. Those tape measure lines look close together. Will that look bunchy when sewn? The tape measure lines. I mean, the stuff that we haven't done yet, um, it, I don't know. You'll have to sew it. I, you'd have to do the, you'd have to sew it and see. Well, let's see. When you do the highlight with satin and lighten the density, can you still change the angle of the stitches? The angle of stitches of the satin or the complex fill? I'm thinking, surely, that you mean the satin. And yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can still manipulate it as long because it's satin. If it was a satin border, you wouldn't be able to manipulate it very easily. Okay, so now we have the rest of this. I'm going to go up to 200. And I'm going to select the outside, the bottom of the tape measure. And I'm going to put an outline around the edge. So I'll hit my space bar. I'm sorry, I just lied to you. I'm going to go up to the do outline icon, right click, and I'm going to create an outline from area edges. I'll take a triple run for now. We may change that. And I'll say OK. But now we know we don't need this right here. So I'll right click and divide with a line and see if I can get that to divide for me. And it did. Now this piece I don't need, so I can just get rid of that. And then over here we have the same issue. See right here? We don't need that end piece because it's going to be covered. So let's just get rid of it. And remove that piece. Now you can see the outline. So let's take both pieces of the outline and we're going to make them black like they would be on a tape measure. <clears throat> Excuse me, because we used create an outline from area edges, it's going to be perfect. It should stitch perfectly. Let's go up here to this piece. You have to do the same thing here. But now I'm a little concerned right here. See that? So I'll go into my view outline icon, right click, and I'll edit. And I'm going to pull that over like that so that it's completely hidden by the screwdriver. So now I'll select this with a right click, view outline icon, right click, create an, an outline from area edges, and a triple run, and OK. But now we have the same issue we here. We have this piece we don't need and this piece we don't need. Now I could put these in manually. I could put these outlines in manually, but the possibility that it's going to match up perfectly and be exactly what we want is, is truly slim to none. So, you know, I suggest that you use the tools that are, whoops. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm going to right click right on the gray. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, that one. And this one we don't need, but I'm missing a line up here. So I'm going to probably have to just put that in myself. And that's fine. That's not that big a deal. It should line up. Just stay right on the edge. Choose both of these. Now, because I already have black in my design, I want to make sure I get the exact same black you, because it's possible to get a dark gray instead of black when you're looking at your colors. So I'll highlight them in the film strip. And I'll come over here and I will right click on the black. And that makes them the same, exactly the same black. Okay, let's take our 3D view off and see what we've got here. 
And now I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to start down here on the black. And just put the lines in. It's the easiest way to do this is to use the merge tool in a minute because then it'll be perfect. You won't have a lot of jumps and travels and everything else. So one of the nice things about our software is we have this tool that saves us a whole ton of time. Now I'm going to anticipate a question here that I'm kind of feeling like is going to be asked here in a minute. So I'm going to take this bottom one, I hold my shift key, and run it all the way up to here, okay, which is all of the black. I'll right click and say merge, and I see what happened right there? This one, it's too close to the line. So, instead of that, I will take, hold my control key down. We want this one. And okay, better. Right click, merge, looking pretty good. So, there's our ruler and I don't think that'll be too bunched up of course you'd have to stitch it to make sure but um, that's basically one to one I don't think that would be too heavy you can always lighten the density here a little bit if you want to um, you could make the black a double run if you want to um, to make it not quite as as uh, thick and that's a personal preference A blanket stitch would work well there too. Um, you just have to figure out how far apart they're going to be, and and that would be fine. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this little guy here, and we'll get a silver color. Turn off my 3D. And now you see how this is just going to overlap so nicely and hide those edges. Nothing worse than little pokies sticking out when, when you're trying to uh, cover everything up. Well, I don't like that very well. So I don't like how far this sticks out. See this? So I'm just going to edit this a little bit actually let us divide with a curve how about that escape I'm gonna get rid of that now I know you see the artwork that's okay it's okay, because when we turn off the artwork, you'll never know. You'll never know the difference. We need a little hole in there, and we need an outline. So let's go ahead and put our outline in. View outline. Create an outline from area edges. We're going to use a double run, because that's what we use on the tape, and put it in and say okay. Now I want this to be the same color as my other outline. So what, I'm what am I going to do? I'm going to select it. I'm going to come over here and right click on that black. Oops. And now I can drag that up there. Something else we can do now. I'm going to drag this there. Now I can take this piece and these two little end pieces that were kind of hanging out by themselves. And I can merge those two. Oops, let's fix that. 
See these little pokey outies? We don't want that. That's better. Okay. So now we have our tape measure. You can put a hole in it if you want. It's up, you know, it's entirely up to you. Mine don't have holes in them, I don't think. I just have one, but you can do that if you want. Okay, next we'll do the screwdriver end, the part that goes into the handle. And let's find a good color. I don't like it blue myself, personally. So I'm going to take this gray. And we can do this as a satin. And we'll see if the satin will be too wide or not. Okay. So much for that, huh? Um, okay. Alrighty. Now, at this point, I'm going to save this design because it's a good idea to do that. You never know what's going to happen. So I'm going to click on my save icon and it's going to take me into where I save my gen files for um, classes. Okay, and I'm going to name it and say OK. Now you notice this changes up here from uh, no name or whatever it says to tool alphabet D. So now I know it's saved. Now each time I want to save it after this, all I have to do is hit that save icon and it saves it right over the last one. If you're the type of person that likes to save in versions, like say you do the design once and you stitch it and you, you find something you don't like and you're going to make a change, you may want a number your um, your designs like tool alphabet D dash A or dash one dash two dash three. I do not recommend doing that. I recommend save over the file or put your original one away somewhere safe and then work on a copy, something like that. I don't recommend saving versions one, two, three, four, five. I've seen way too much stuff come to me that um, is version three, but then the stitch out was version something else, and then the picture was some other version. So you need to keep it real consistent. Okay, we have some decisions to make on the on the handle of the screwdriver. Since we've got dark purple here and dark purple here, which is shading, I'm going to treat this as shading in here, I think. So I'm going to put all of this in then do my shading and my outline, and then put the top piece in, I think. I think. Now, do we want it pink? We could do it pink. Pink is okay with me. We'll do it this color. How about that? Now, I want to divide this, I think. So we're going to divide with a line. Because I can change the stitch angle now on this one to be different, which is going to give it a little different feel and color. Now, all my stitch angles are kind of going the same direction. So because this is touching something with the same stitch direction, I want to change that stitch direction a little bit. Because otherwise you may have some issues with um, push and pull. Play with it until you're comfortable with what the stitch angle is doing. Okay, so this is outlined, but I'm going to put the shading in first. 
And the shading I'm going to do um, I think I'm going to do the shading freehand. So I'm going to take this color and my freehand line tool, and I'm just going to put the shading in. Now, this will not be perfect, but in case you haven't noticed, shading is not perfect. Shading is not perfect when you're doing uh, things that are real. And in the grand scheme of things, um, you don't want the shading to be absolutely perfect. Some people like it. Oops. Some people like it perfect. Oops. I'm stretching that down a little bit. Okay, so now we can put our, our top piece on. Now this shape is not the best shape. So you're going to have to kind of work with it. And that is not perfect, so I'm going to try again. Better, still not perfect. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, and that is going to be the other color. Let's look and see what we've got here. Remember when you're putting satins in? They always look bigger than the way you put it in. They always kind of spread and fatten up a little bit when you see them on the screen. Now we're going to do an outline. Same way we did it before. We'll do a double run again. I really prefer the triple. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'm doing the, the double because I know some of you like the double run. And generate. Put an outline around this piece. It's a good, good opportunity to fix things that don't look quite right also. I'm going to adjust with an arc. I don't like how this looks, so I'm going to adjust with an arc. I'm going to put one left click there and one here. Now notice how I can take this line and put it where I want it. Now I can just bring that one down a little bit, and it just feels a little better to me when I do it that way. Another outline from area edges, double run. But remember, we have two layers here. So I'm going to take the bottom layer off of the outline. This is the piece. We don't need two of them. We're going to merge those. And they're using an even darker red. I'm going to use...
sure don't like that black. That'll work. Same thing, I'm just doing the same thing I did before. Don't need that one. And now I'll merge these together. <clears throat> now when this happens, many times it's, it's just a simple moving of an inner and out and it goes away. Just a simple, very simple change and a very simple move. Now there were some detail lines in there as well. So let's go and put those in. Remember to start from an existing line. You'll have much better luck putting these lines in. I'm going to select them all. Do the outline icon, right click on the gray, and merge. And you see what came back? Because the in and the out changed. So I'm going to take my in and put it there and see if that does it. There we go. You're going to have a jump anyway coming from here. If you can't have the in right there, then you can't. It's going to stitch in and out, in and out, we should probably put this, let's see what's going to stitch next, change the stitching order up to there, see where the out is right here, so we probably want the in to come in there as well. Then it's going to come down and do that, put the out up there, and then the last piece and that'll work pretty well I think. When we turn off the artwork you don't see what might have been bothering you, that little thing over here, that little thing over there, you don't see that so it's okay. Okay. Um, the artwork is from Design Stitch, and no, it has not been done. But I had someone request it, so I'm guessing it will be done. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to do, I'm just going to delete the artwork because I don't need the artwork anymore, right? I'm done. Do a final generate. Check your stitching order. Make sure everything is right here. Make sure everything is right here and it is not, is it? Maybe it is. It is, okay? Check your stitching order, everything's good. Then you're going to do a final save and then export to your machine in the format that you need for your machine. Any questions? I always make digitizing look so easy. It really is easy. You just have to do it a lot. It's like anything else. If you are a piano player, you make piano playing look easy. It's, it's anything else. Um, would you like to see the rest of this alphabet? Just the artwork for it? I think it's a cute alphabet. I'll see if I can find it here. Oh, let's go here. Here it is. I 
I think this is a really, really, really cute alphabet. <clears throat> Florence, what you want to do is there's 26 letters in the alphabet. We know that. You'll want to divide this up into maybe four equal packages. There'll be probably two sevens and two sixes, something like that, or however you want to divide it up, divide it into uh, three or four equal, as equal as possible packages, and we'll release them in groups. So that's the alphabet. Oh, you're welcome, Florence. Any other questions? And of course you stitch and if anything doesn't work when you stitch, you start again, you know, and fix the problems and make them go away. And and you can see that, you know, problems do arise. I did this highlighting, you know, someone said, you know, how do you know what to use for highlighting and, and what's going to look best? That comes with experience. After a little while, you kind of look at things and go, hmm, I think I'll do this or I think I'll do that. Um, it, it does. It comes with experience. And I'm going to say, no, I don't want to use the feather stitch because I think I li just like it that way rather than the feather stitch. But, you know, that's a personal, it's a personal thing. Some people like to use um, the complex fill and keep the same shape as the design and and just chop pieces out so that you have one complex fill on top of another. And that's cool too. I, you know, I, I have no real preference except that it needs to stitch well. Thanks, Shirley. Um, okay, question was asked, do I have to lighten the density here because of this line coverage here. You do not, but what I would do is I would change this to a run or a double run just to um, not make it quite so bulky. And then I would stitch it and see how it felt. And if it looked good and it felt the way I wanted it to, to feel, then I would leave it alone. If not, I would make a change and stitch it again. And that comes with experience. It really does it really just comes with experience I personally think I would have made this wider I would have made it much wider on the um, on the ruler but that's a personal preference again what about the thick part of the outline on the tape measure tab oh up there that's one of those things where it's an in and out issue. It's an in and out issue. So we'll just change it and it goes away. Whenever you have those things where the lines cross and do some weird things, generally it's just an in and out issue. Change one of the ins, either the in or the out, and generally it will go away. But because we allow our software to place our in and out for us based on how we put the objects into our design, Sometimes it doesn't do a great job on that, and we have to go in and help it and say, no, don't do that here, do this here, because we have the brains, the computer and the software doesn't, if that makes sense. And look and see if we have new folks. Uh-huh. Hi, Frank. Cool. Okay, no other questions? Uh, could the handle be angled up and down? Could the handle be angled up and down to help blend? You mean here? What do you, I, I'm not sure what you mean, angled up and down. I mean, this way? The stitch angle? You could. You could. 
um, a single run here might get lost if you do that. But yeah, you could. Depends on if you want this to, if you want the shading to stand out and really be seen, you're going to make the angles different. If you want it to blend in, you're going to want to make them the same because then there's a blending. It's just like we did here. We have that satin wrapping around. Same kind of concept. Okay, any other questions? All righty, well, I hope you enjoyed I'm going to say this again because I was playing with it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, the webinar and maybe you learned just a little something or got a refresher on something that um, you had forgotten. I hope you all will try this design. It's not a hard one. looks a lot harder than it is. And, um, yes, you could use a... Uh, well, Karen said a blanket stitch here. So if I put this in real quick, I never work out at 100, so I'm doing this just for sake of argument. That didn't work. Okay. There we go. My goodness. Wow. Okay. I'm trying to put this. Over there. I can live with that. Okay, so if I put this in, just the line, and make it black. If you want to use a blanket stitch, you can. And this, this would be an easy way to do it, but you may have to fiddle with the blanket stitch a little bit. Hit the space bar, and you're in the line properties, and just scroll over here to blanket stitch. Go up into the tab. This is where you set what you want to happen. You can do right, left, or double. I'm going to leave it on right for now. The step is how far apart these are. I'm going to make this about a three, I'm guessing. And the branch height might be okay at two, and I'll leave the, the uh, branch angle alone in the offset. And it was the wrong way, so that's okay. We'll go back. And we'll make it uh, left. And we're going to make this about a six. And we're getting closer. So see, there you have your... your lines and you can continue to play with this until you get it just exactly the way you like it I think I'd like them not to be quite so tall and not quite so far apart so when they're when they're not so far apart they put more lines in like this one has more lines you could do it that way you absolutely could just remember that you have this end piece here so you gotta hide that you have to make sure that's underneath the screwdriver that's all 
So you're going to put it up here where this one is. And then all is right with the world. Okay? So yes, you can do it. Either way, either way is perfectly acceptable. Um, design stitch, it's a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Um, I doubt that they have it anymore. It was a, um, a shared version. They only sold six copies of it, so I doubt very much you'll be able to find it. Can you merge a blanket stitch like a regular line? I do not believe so, but let's try. Well, I guess you can. It turns into a blanket stitch. So if you have two pieces of blanket stitch, yes, you can merge them. But if you have a just a want just a line merged to a blanket, it's going to turn into a blanket stitch. That makes sense. Hi, I'm Larry. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was recorded during a live webinar that Holly taught some of her students for digitizing. At this point, she's finished the lesson that she had planned to teach and for the next 20 or 30 minutes, probably, she'll go on and answer random questions from her students during the live webinar. I'm going to cut those off and I'm going to take those and turn them into little video shorts to put here on our YouTube channel later. But for now, you've got this lesson and if you enjoyed it, learned something, please give it a thumbs up. That helps our rankings with YouTube. Um, also, if you'd like a copy of the software, that Holly's using so that you can digitize along with her, we can get you a 30-day trial that's fully functional if you just go to www.trygenerations.com www.trygenerations.com and we'll give you all the details there. Thanks for watching.